All right guys, in my client server architecture video, we learned why they are so popular and common. Wherein, typically a server will be serving multiple clients. Peer-to-peer -peer is a network architecture in which each computer or device on the network can function as both server and a client. This means that rather than having a single central server hosting all of the content, each user can host some of it. Peer-to-peer -peer networks are relatively advanced, which make it a good candidate to know for your system design interviews. Perhaps the best way to understand what peer-to-peer -peer network is and how they work is through an example. Let's say you are asked to design a system for a big tech company wherein you need to download and transfer large video footage files from security cameras to thousands of machines at once. So here I have my server or one machine which will deploy or transfer large files to thousands of other machines. Now in any system design interview, it is sometimes important that you quantify. That is, you talk in numbers. So in this case, let's say size of each file is 5 gigabytes. And so we want to transfer these 5 gigabyte files from this one machine to all the thousands of other machines. And we want to do that repeatedly. Because you may get video footages from these security cameras multiple times a day. Maybe every 15 minutes or maybe every 30 minutes. So basically your one server machine will receive 5 gigabyte video file every 15 to 30 minutes and send it across to all the thousand machines throughout the day. So every time we want to deploy or transfer 5 gigabyte files, all the thousand machines will send requests to this one server machine. And since this system is being built for a big tech company, we can safely assume it to have a powerful data center which will have a total network throughput of say 40 gigabits per second or 5 gigabytes per second. It's because there are 8 bits in 1 byte, so we divide 40 by 8 and get 5 gigabytes per second. 5 gigabytes per second network throughput is reasonable to assume for any advanced data center. Based on this throughput assumption, if we have to send 5 gigabyte files to one machine, it will take one second. And so for thousands of machines, it's gonna take 1000 seconds. 1000 seconds is approximately 17 minutes. Now 17 minutes is quite long for this kind of operation, especially if we have to transfer several files multiple times of day. So for instance, if we have to transfer the file every 15 minutes, it will be really bad if it is taking 17 minutes. Clearly there is a bottleneck because we have just one server machine being used here. Now a typical approach during a bottleneck which you might have seen me taking in my previous system design videos is to horizontally scale the number of server machines. So instead of one machine serving the 5 gigabyte files, let's have 10 server machines serving these 5 gigabyte files. So all our thousand machines will now request from these 10 machines in a distributed manner. And so assuming that these thousand machines request to the servers in a balanced way, meaning each server will serve about 100 machines, and this will speed up our system by 10 times over. So some machines will request the file to this server, some machines will request the file to this server, and so on. Now even though we have increased the speed by 10 times, this is still isn't great. 17 minutes by 10 is roughly a minute and a half, which is not really bad for our use case, but still not amazing. More importantly, now these 5 gigabyte files need to be replicated to all these 10 machines. Given that security cameras will be generating video footages several times a day, creating so many files, do we really want to replicate all these huge files across the 10 server machines? And what if we have to deal with 10,000 machines? We might end up adding much more than 10 server machines and so the video files need to be replicated across all those server machines. Maybe there is a better solution. What about sharding? Maybe we can shard our 5 GB files that is, some files live on one machine and some live in other machine. So let's say we have 25 gigabyte files. We spread them out so that each machine will now have only two files. So that we don't have to replicate across all the machines. But then we run into the same issue. Where if a machine has to transfer the file to all the other thousand machines, one server machine will become bottleneck for all those thousand machines. None of our approaches have worked so far. And as you might have guessed by now, that is where peer-to-peer -peer networks comes into play. Let's see how we can improve the system using peer-to-peer -peer network. In a peer-to-peer -peer network, you refer the machines as peers. So instead of saying thousand machines or server, we call them as peers. The idea is that they will work together as peers to achieve a common goal. Now let's go back to our first solution where we had just one server machine trying to send the 5GB files to this thousand machine. And so there was a bottleneck. Now what if instead we were to split up the 5GB file? That is, we split up the file in small chunks and send these chunks to all the peers and then let the peers communicate with each other to find the missing chunks from each other and build up their own total file. That is the general gist of a peer-to-peer -peer network. Continuing with our example, let's say we divide 5GB files into 1000 files of size 5MB each 
after we split the 5 gigabyte files into 1005 megabyte files, we can now transfer all these 1005 megabyte files into 1000 machines. That is, we send one 5 megabyte file to each machine. And this will take one second because 1005 megabyte file is effectively 5 gigabyte file. And since we assumed a network throughput of 5 gigabyte per second, this means we can transfer 1005 megabyte files per second to 1000 machines. So if a single machine has one 5 megabyte file, now it needs 999 remaining 5 megabyte files. And so a single machine needs to talk to 999 other machines to get the missing pieces it doesn't have. Now the big question is how long would it take a single machine to receive all the 999 files? Well, it would take 0.999 seconds to get all the other files. Because 5 gigabyte file take 1 seconds. And we have divided 5 gigabyte file into 1000 5 megabyte files. So to transfer one 5 megabyte file, it would take 1 second divided by 1000. And if we have to transfer this 5 megabyte file to rest of the 999 machines, it would take 1 second by 1000 multiplied by 999, which is 0 0.999 seconds or approximately 1 second. So for a single machine, it would take 1 second to get the complete file from the other machines. Now the beauty in this setup is that all the machines will be talking to each other in parallel. That is, while these two machines on top left are talking, these two machines on the right can talk simultaneously. And these two machines can talk here, so on and so forth. Basically, you are able to parallelize the transfer since machines are simultaneously transferring the files to each other. To give more clarity, let's walk through our solution step by step. Consider our single step is a transfer of 5 megabytes file. From our assumptions earlier, we know that we can transfer 5 gigabyte files in one second, meaning 1000 times 5 megabyte files per second. So to transfer one 5 megabyte file, it will take us 0.001 seconds. And so this is a single step. For our demonstration, let's compare our naive solution of using just one machine versus the peer-to-peer -peer network. Let's say we have this single machine sending 5 gigabyte file to this machine, and they are not part of the peer-to-peer -peer network. Rest of the servers or machines are peers receiving the file using peer-to-peer -peer network solution. So what happens in our first step? That is at 0.001 second when we send our first 5 megabyte file. Both of our top machines will start transferring 5 megabytes. So our red machine here, which is not part of the peer-to-peer -peer network, will get the first chunk of our 5 megabytes. Let's number it with 1. Now here on the left in our peer-to-peer -peer network, let's say this machine on top left gets the first 5 megabyte chunk. Let's number it 1 as well. At the second step, that is, at the second 0.001 seconds, the second 5 megabyte chunk will be transferred. So in our naive solution, our main machine will send that chunk to this machine. Whereas, in our peer-to-peer -peer network, our main machine might send the chunk to this machine. But, simultaneously, this peer here, which has been marked with number 1 earlier, can send its chunk to one of its peers, let's say to this peer. So as you can see, by the end of step 2, that is after 0.002 seconds, with our naive solution, we have transferred two 5 megabyte chunks. Whereas in our peer-to-peer -peer network solution, we have transferred three 5 megabyte solution. Okay, so let's go to the third step. Here we transfer another chunk in our naive solution. And so let's mark it 3. And in our peer-to-peer -peer network solution, let's say this machine receives number 3 chunk. And then we have three peers which will send their chunks to one of their peers simultaneously. Let's number them accordingly. As you can see at step three with our naive solution, we have now transferred three chunks of five megabytes. Whereas in our peer-to-peer -peer solution, we have transferred seven five megabyte chunks. As you can imagine at each step with our peer-to-peer -peer network solution, the rate of transfer will grow exponentially as compared to our naive solution. Because we have so many peers who can communicate to each other. And that is the beauty of peer-to-peer -peer network. Now, in our example, I selected the peer randomly. But for the peer-to-peer -peer network to be successful, each peer needs to know what peer they should be talking to next. That is also known as peer discovery or peer selection. These are basically strategies that guide peers which peer they should communicate with next or get data from next. And this can be done in a couple of ways. One way is by having a central database that orchestrates the entire network, which keeps the information to help a peer figure out which peer it should connect next to. So while the peers are transferring the files to each other, they will communicate with this central database server to figure out whom they should be sending the file to. This central database is also known as Tracker. 
The other way is using a gossip protocol. Similar to what people gossip at office or school space, peers will gossip or talk to each other and figure out which peer they should be sending data or receiving data from. So instead of having a central database or tracker, each peer will now carry mappings of what chunks they have received versus what they need. So one peer might say, I have chunk 2, 4, and 7. And I know this peer carries chunk 1 and 5. Based upon that information, the other peer will know which peer to go next to. Now this kind of a setup is usually implemented by each peer having its own hash table. For example, peer 1 will have hash table that will map IP address of peer to the chunks it has got. Same goes with other peers. They exchange information with other peers, keep populating and sharing their local hash table information with other peers. This concept of using hash table at each peer level to store information on what peer has what data is called distributed hash table or DHT. Peer-to-peer -peer networks can be extremely fast and they have lots of applications. You can in fact check out the system Kraken that was created by Uber. Link to their GitHub page is in the description.